If you just sit down, I'll be with you in two. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me in the locker room on this Friday afternoon. I'm Alan Locker. Emmy Award winning producer Wendy Rich is here today to look back at her career producing some of your favorite daytime dramas. Wendy began her association with ABC television as a secretary in children's programming. After working as a coordinator of late night programming, she began her producing career as an associate producer of the ABC late night series in concert. Wendy became the executive producer of ABC's General Hospital in 1992, where she remained for nine years, earning five Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Drama Series. As executive producer of General Hospital, she created the General Hospital spinoff, Port Charles, in 1997, delivering one and a half hours daily scripted programming for ABC Daytime. Following General Hospital, Wendy was the executive producer of the MTV groundbreaking docu soap series Laguna Beach, The Real Orange County. Wendy is the executive producer and co-writer of the award-winning web series The Bay, along with Gregory J. Martin and Christos Andrews, among others. With Gregory, she produced, co-created, and co-wrote the upcoming spinoff of The Bay titled YA. She is currently in partnership with Rich Productions, working with her husband, Alan, and her son, Peter, developing films and television series. It is my pleasure to welcome Emmy Award-winning producer, Wendy Rich, to the locker room. Hey, Wendy. We made it. We made it. <laughs> I'm sorry for the delay, everybody. So sorry. That's quite all right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I, I love you. you're married to an Alan who spells his name with A L A N. Yes, yes. How very, how very long did you say you you we are together? We have been married fifty five years. We That's so we've been together fifty seven years, and um, it's uh, it's a lot harder to stay in than it is to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but you 55 years is is quite it's, quite it's, an accomplishment yeah, yeah it's good we uh we tend to reevaluate it and look at it and appreciate it and fight the same way we've always fought and <laughs> try to accept that stuff you know i think well, paul you... i think paul simon said uh, or wrote uh, after change we're more or less the same so kind of accepting that in people as we change is uh, not easy, but we do it and we're grateful. We've got great grown men, children and four grandchildren. And uh, aside from all the COVID non stuff, not nonsense stuff, uh, life is good. How old are your grandchildren? The youngest is 13. The um, oldest is 27, and then 25 and 21. So those three, the older ones, uh, came to the um, general hospital picnics. We used to do picnics, or we did a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. every we get together, um, I think it was during the summer. This is going back almost 30 years. But we get together during the summer and barbecue and everybody, cast, crew, everything. So my grandchildren came. Everybody brought their kids, their grandkids. It was wonderful. It was a great day at the park. I mean, that's something, uh, you know, to have grandparents for as long as they have, because yes. I, I definitely didn't. And that's that's real special. Well, um, I was, let, was very young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's beautiful. You, they, you know, they get yeah. to spend a few time with you. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Flushing, New York. Queens and girl. I'm a Queens girl, and mm -hmm. um, very, very grateful. Had a great, had a very great childhood. Um, so, and I love Queens. I loved it. It was suburban Queens, and um, it is, and it's different now. Um, it's great. The house is still there. I went to Flushing High School, and. Um, yeah, moved out. Uh, my parents moved to California um, my first semester in college. 
So that's a whole long story. I don't know whether you want to get into it. I'm happy to talk, <laughs> but that's a long story that ended up with my 57, our 57 year old son. So it's, um, it's wow. a story. It's a story going back in time. Did you have a career path when you uh, attended Syracuse University, a career path in mind? No, um, I wasn't raised that way. Um, I think that was, and I didn't know to, I didn't learn typing because I didn't think I wanted to be a secretary. I knew that. And I wish I had learned typing because it would have helped me throughout. But um, no, I did not. My career came, um, my career came when my husband um, came home one day. He was a very successful agent. And he basically said, we had two children at the time. And he basically said, I love this work. I've always wanted to do it. And, um, and when I, I will succeed and get the top of the ladder. And when I get there, I will become them. And I don't like them. And I don't know that I have the strength yet of character. He was raised very differently. He's a very great man, but he has really fought for his um, stability. And, um, and educated himself and he and looked inward a lot. And um, he said, so you have to go to work, go back to work. And for me, that was OK. You know, you took care of me. I take care of you. I mean, I had mm -hmm. work. I had worked a little bit, but I didn't have a career in mind. And um, so I went to work as a, for a neighbor across the street who had just gotten a job at ABC as an executive in children's programming. And it was a great education in programming. Um, it really taught me um, the responsibility of programming, that we reach so many millions of people, that everything we do and say has a purpose and a re it has an effect. An so, impact, yeah, for sure. An impact. And that's, that's deep. And so I, <laughs> very early on, um, I learned that. And that was great. What types of uh, children's shows was ABC doing at that time? Um, we were doing, well, I don't remember the series as much because it, it was more about the after school specials. Mm -hmm. and so which, did, which had huge impacts on kids. Very kids huge. Kids still impact. talk about them today, they, a lot of kids. They were terrific little movies, really. Yeah. And, um, and my husband again was my. I was very fortunate. I, I, I my husband was extremely and still is uh, supportive of me and not competitive. I mean, again, we have our arguments, but it, there's <laughs> that competition. And so he he basically said to me, you know, you. When I said to him, I think I can do this. And, um, but um, he said, look, you just need to know that, because I came up with ideas and I basically brought a book in and gave it to a producer and, and, you know, they then, sh and he said, they're going to take it, shut the door and buzz you for coffee. Don't get pissed off, Wendy. That's your job. This will take time. And um, that's what happened. And it was great because I got to learn story and, and all of that during that time. But it was mainly after school specials. But what, what a, a smart thing for him to say, you know, because, you know, just a helpful thing. He said Your that um, when, I, when I first went to ABC, he said, because um, I looked at all the guys who had MBAs. And I said, mm. I didn't, I quit school to have my baby. And because I was rebellious against my parents. And even though I was living at home, I didn't want to go to UCLA or something stupid like that, that 18 year olds will do. And I, um, and I said, I think I can do it, but I don't have that MBA and I don't have, I don't know that education. And he's, he, again, he, now he was an agent. So he, he really, he can see things that I, he could see what I couldn't see. He said, you, you're just as smart as they are. Um, you may not have that vocabulary, but you have the smarts and the instincts and you'll learn whatever vocabulary you need. I was articulate. He said, but you have something that they don't have. And I said, well, what's that? And he said, well, you don't have fear. Wow. And I said, 
Right. Why would I, what would I be afraid of? Hmm. So it I love was, that. it was, uh, he knew me and uh, he was right there. Just, he said, but it's going to take 10 years for you to, you just got to do the work and it will take you 10 years to achieve a place of um, where you feel successful. And 10 years later with my a partner, Paula Levenbach at the time, we made a movie starring Anne Margaret called Who Will Love My Children. Um, it was starring Anne Margaret and Frederick Forrest. And um, it was wonderful. It was nominated for an Emmy. So it, it, that was 10 years later. And who was, was that for ABC? That was for ABC. Yeah. Yeah. We were at, uh, we were at uh, Universal. I believe we were at Universal at the time under a, a Paula and I were in, at Universal under a deal. I'm, under a deal. Um, a lot of our viewers are all uh, saying how much they used to love the ABC school specials. I mean, I know like, I mean, people, you know, have those in their mind because they, they educated kids about, you know, different subjects. So through, through entertainment. Yeah. 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 You know, Completely. Is best, which is the best way to learn. I'm sorry. Well, because it, yeah, it's a comfortable way. It's not, and you're also not forced to learn. School is, sure. you know, a, a forced education. Did the job? Uh, what did the job in children's programming lead to next? Um, after children's programming, I um, I believe I don't have my resume in front of me. I yeah, believe, well, I believe I went. I, I, it was then that I went into late night programming as a junior executive. And um, and learned about the politics of being an executive um, because I was a bit fearless and um, and had ideas and um, did what uh, you're not supposed to do, um, which is uh, write an email to your boss's boss. And um, and so I got my hands slapped and then I got the job as associate producer of In Concert because basically I I wrote an email saying, Here's what we need. Here's how I think we can do it, and blah, blah blah. So, I was rewarded for my error, but I learned a big, just political lesson. <laughs> and politics in the entertainment business is tough. Politics, and the you know, it's not an easy thing to navigate. Mm -mm. You know, as much as Alan might have taught you something, I mean, it's really, I mean, it's really politics and entertainment. You learn on the job and by the individual personalities you're thrown into working with. Um, and, 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 how did... truth, and people who tell the truth um, are mm -hmm. not always received well. And, and, and so it took me a long time to realize, to navigate that. Not everybody wants to hear your truth. I mean, they don't want you to lie and, and I don't do that, but they don't need to hear every comment or every truth. So I, you know, there's a lot you have to learn. I did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and then you headed up movies for television at Fox Broadcasting. Can you talk yes, about... Before, before I did that, I was at ABC in movies for television. And, uh, so you, and le I worked, you, you learned I worked, at ABC. I, I, I loved ABC. I loved all the people there. I worked for an incredible man, Ted Harbert. Um, oh, I remember his name. Yeah. Ted is just a wonderful, wonderful leader. He taught me a lot. Um, great exchange. And um, and uh, Mark Pedowitz was there at the time, who's the head of CW now. So it was Marcy Carsey was there. A lot of great, talented people. Barry Diller. Um, and, um, and so I was uh, in the movie for television division. And, um, and then um, went to Fox. Um, at, in, at ABC, I was one of three executives. And then I went to Fox um, with a great opportunity. And I really wanted to work with Peter Chernin. And I really wanted to work with he and Barry Diller. So, um, And that must have been close to the beginning of Fox. That was um, very close to the beginning. And um, we had a mandate to do 30 movies for an average cost of $2.2 million. Develop, we developed 80 uh, original teleplays. And we could, what was so wonderful and free about it is we could, you, we could do it with whomever we wanted. Um, and so 
a com comic writer could come in and we could say, well, what's your dark bent or what genre do you prefer? You know, what do you love? But, you know, you get very cubbyholed in this business. And um, so we could cross lines with talent uh, that they were grateful for and get great talent. Ben Stiller uh, did, I think, one of his first movies with us, as did Tom Shadiak directed his first film with us. Um, and um, it was great. Uh, Jim, what Carrey, are you Jim Carrey uh, was on In Living Color at the time. And we were doing mainly comedies. Am I getting off on it uh, too much on the movies? I'm sorry. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Jim, Jim was doing um, In Living Color, but we were we were doing mainly comedies. And his manager had talked to me about him doing comedy, you know, kind of like Jimmy Stewart kind of thing. We didn't really have anything. And one day in a meeting I, um, where we could just sit and talk about, with my group, what we wanted to do, we talked about, and I said, you know, I, I just know that doing a serious movie would, would be good. It would be good to get some recognition, a quality movie that makes a statement. So we, I was living on Maple Drive at the time in, in Beverly Hills. Oh, wow. and, and we said, let so, and we had a producer and, and he brought in James Duff. I said, let's do a um, Ordinary People, but for Fox. And James Duff and Paul Lussier came up with this doing time on Maple Drive, which of course I named the title because I lived on Maple Drive and life. I, I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah. What an impactful movie, you know. So that was, that was um, a lot of fun. And after that, um, out of, um, I got fired my first time. It was horrible for a lot of political reasons. And that's, some that I've- That's and the business. <laughs> I've had to look at uh, always looking at you know what do I learn how do, how do I grow because um, things don't happen at randomly and I don't believe things happen randomly in our lives so whatever happens um, it, it's for me it's not about blame it's about accountability and growth and reflection anyway and the opportunity came to do um, General Hospital out of the blue. And I had never watched a soap opera. I know. I couldn't believe that. Um, um, and I, I think I had seen Days once. My mother pointed it out to me when I was pregnant. And she said, see, it's <laughs> you're doing yeah. what they're doing on Days or something silly like that. <laughs> and, and I read that you met with my former boss who hired me at As the World Turns and Guiding Light, Mickey Dwyer Dobbin. I met with Mickey. Yes. Yeah. Yes. First, Linda, um, Linda Gottlieb, Linda Gottlieb, who was doing One Life to Live at the time. Linda Gottlieb. Mm -hmm. Producing, right? Yeah. She did Dirty Dancing, Linda. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and she yeah, introduced me to Mickey. And, um, and I, and I, first I talked to Linda and I said, you know, Linda, I haven't watched, I, I don't, um, writing is really important to me because if, if the story and the characters aren't rich and good, it's, I don't know, it's, it doesn't have a purpose or a meaning. And she said, well, just watch for two weeks and, and see how you feel. You're going to love it, Wendy. And I watched for two weeks with a legal pad and I filled up two legal pads of characters and Bobby this and Monica that and this one that and why don't they this and how about this and a doctor this and what about an AIDS story and let's do that. And I was like, okay, I'm hooked. I am completely hooked. And, and what what and a lucky thing for me. General Hospital because fresh eyes. Yes. I mean, to well, not really Mickey. have known that. Yeah. That was that was Mickey. She was very bold and very brave in that way because that was challenging to step out of the norm and bring people yeah. in that thought differently. It was very very bright. And, and, and very rare though, to bring in people who didn't do it before. You know, right. because it's story, a, it is an education. Storytelling is storytelling. The education mm -hmm. is in the, the pacing, the timing. So I called, I remember I called Agnes Nixon and I called Bill Bell. And I said, I said, okay, tell me something. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know, ag they were both extremely gracious and and said, you know, you wouldn't be here if you couldn't do it, which is always important to acknowledge, I think. And, and it was very important. And, and Agnes, of course, you know, make them laugh, make them cry, make them wait. And I, and that, that, that meant a, that was like, okay, don't rush it. And Bill Bell was just extremely gracious. You just, I don't remember the exact conversation other than what a gentleman and you call me anytime I'm here for you. And they were, they were, they were wonderful. And, uh, and, and those are two people to, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, to, to meet with. They, those are two people to meet with, yeah. you know, who, who have done it well. I, I was so impressed because I, I read that you met with every actor to learn from them about yeah. their characters when you first arrived. Tell everybody why you felt that was so important. Well, I I can read history. I can look at what I see on camera. If I, but I couldn't pick up thirty years. The show had been on. Tony, uh, uh, Jean. I don't. I don't think Jeannie was on the show then. Um, but I talked to Jeannie when Jeannie when we brought her back. Brought her back. But you know, Jackie Zeman. Um, everybody can, um, they have a perspective um, on their character and what they did and why they did things. And, and I, I captured character and story from the real, from them. They had been through several, not been through, they had uh, worked with many um, producers and many writers. So they had a synthesis of who their characters were. And that gave me a great perspective. It helped tremendously. And, and story comes from that. Once, for me, once I understand character, then then I it, it helps to go, well, character might do this or the character might do that. And uh, it may not be what the actor would have thought of. So there's always, you know, there's often a little debate. Would mm -hmm. my character do that? Um, and, um, I remember having that debate with Tony Geary once and I said, well, think, he said, I, I don't think my character would do something. And I thought if Tony ever sees this, which he probably wouldn't, I, I don't, mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to ever quote him, but, um, right. I think I said, well, Tony, did you ever think about the fact that the character would, and I would lay out the stories? Well, no, I didn't think of that. I said, that's why we have 10 writers in the back room. Your input is invaluable, but we have 10 people in the back, not in the back room, but 10 other writers who are thinking that. And he said, that makes sense. I get it now. I see why. Because I laid out the story for him, where it was coming from, where it was going. You know, he, like most actors, they want to know. And um, so it, actor, it's, I, I truly respect them and where they're coming from with that. It took me time i had not had that experience one-on-one -on -one with actors when i went to the show not as much you know well yeah i mean you you're thrown to you know have 30 cast members or whatever the number but and yeah. ongoing production and ongoing material so i i had a career in a lot of development and a couple of movies for television which was great but not this uh, but not this pace in doing 260 shows a year, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so there a, was it's that, the there world. Was that, there was that too. There was the uh, the train. Somebody said to me, it could have been, I'm trying to think of who it was. It could have been Mickey. Uh, <laughs> um, that it's like, you know, you're, or one of the writers, you know, you're, you're riding on, on the side of a moving train. You know, you're hanging out the window, just you know, writing this. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's a moving train. But the train moves, the team works, and they were so responsive to to having their opinions voiced because it was very important for me that the crew was on board as well. You know, everybody goes home a critic. Everybody goes to the movies and critiques. Everybody likes a certain story for a certain reason. So I spent time with the crew, the heads and other crew members too. I wanted them yeah, you know, I remember to feel empowered, to feel part of this, not just to move a cable. You know, they're watching, they're listening. They were crying 
during, you know, the Robin and Stone story. They were mm -hmm. crying during moments of, you know, Alan's drug addiction. They, you know, they were emotional. I wanted to hear from those people too. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think you said when you first got there, where are the kids? Yes. I, no said to, I said to Jackie, I said, you have a kid, right? I mean, I, I saw a couple, I saw a month of shows or something. That was really all I could see. I only had a month to prepare. Um, wow. And, and um, or a couple of weeks, ABC said, get in there. And um, she said, oh, I think they're in the basement. I said, well, we got to get them out of the basement. And um, so we did. <laughs> we brought whatever children <laughs> were uh, in the background, we brought forward and then, and then, um, you know, once once we got rolling and I, you know, was able to um, get Shelly in and, and eventually Julie and Lisa Levinson and Carol Scott, you know, once the whole team was there. But in the beginning, we we brought in, uh, you know, we brought Robin up and we brought, um, you know, Bob, you know, we brought all the children up and brought Antonio in and Steve Burton out and, mm -hmm. you know, just to create it, that whole young group which was what was going on in television, you know, Melrose Place and 90210. And we had the opportunity to do that. So it was great. And I posted awesome. that picture of you with Ricky Martin. Did you bring him on as well? No, oh, I love that picture. Thank you so much. Can you send that to me? I couldn't. I will. Steven, Steven Bergman sent it to me. I will send it I to you. I just sure. love it. Ricky, we were both so young. <laughs> he, um, I think... Uh, uh, either his agent or his manager, well, Mark Teschner always would bring me some. Mark brought me Ricky, and then I met his manager and agent. Uh, and I, mean, I who doesn't I mean, love Ricky? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I, I, I fell in love with him. You know, you just, I, and I, I did see his you know. performance was of a quality that was, um, this is now the musical performance. He was a major star outside of the United States, but nobody really knew him. The Hispanic audience obviously knew him. And, um, and then I met with him. He is the kindest, dearest, smartest, dearest, kindest person <laughs> I've met um, wow. alongside of Anne Margaret, frankly. Never a bad <laughs> thing to say about anybody. Very honest, very direct. And um, it was um, very, very grateful to work with him. I'll We're, send it to you. And if I forget, please, please thank remind you. We me. Still stay, we still stay in touch. You know, he, they ah, were, I would love to interview him. I, I worked, I was a, I started my career as a page at ABC. And I have a picture oh. with, with him when he, in New York, because he, uh, ah. as part of, my, as part of Menudo, he was on Regis and Kathy Lee, which I had ah. always worked on. So like we're, we're he's both a very like, he's a, we're probably he's a, both 13. <laughs> no, we're like 18 yeah, years yeah. old. He's a very down to earth, real person. I mean, I, I remember visiting him in New York when he was doing Les Mis. And I saw the show. He was wonderful. He'd always wanted to do Broadway. And I went backstage to meet him. And his backstage room was basically on the backstage with a curtain drawn around him. So we sat with a curtain around us and he looked at me. Now, this is like a major international superstar. And he looked at me, he said, Wendy, I am my happiest right here. Not that he doesn't like good things, but he's he really respects simple things. He's a great, great person. I'm trying to think, but what did he do a Vita? I think I saw him in a Vita. Was that what he did? I don't know. He because I think uh, after I the Miz he did. I, I think. think you're right, but I don't. I, I, I don't. I know I, I saw him in a, in a show, in a stage show. Looking back on that first year, is there one thing you wish you had known in advance before accepting the job? Oh, um, I think more of the backstory. I I, yeah. I would have liked to have known more um, because you can draw from backstory more. Um, I think it would have been, I would have personally liked more experience working directly with writers, more writers, more volume. I mean, even though I came from Fox and I worked with writers, it's not the same as being in a trench on a, a running train. 
And um, again, I can be very, I am very direct. And, you know, there, there, you have to learn how to get things across. So that, that, I think that took me a while. I think that. And, and but I would have some... liked to have known much more of the history. I would have liked, you know, a couple of months to just look at, you know, key things. And I didn't have it. I just had to jump in. And I don't know if you remember this, but there were some story issues with Jane Elliott that first year. And I read an interview you did with Damon Jacobs of We Love Soaps. And, and it was you said it was a difficult situation when an actor who has played their character for years is upset about a story point. Sometimes they are right and we'd make the adjustment. Sometimes they are reacting to the character only as they have known it, not to how it could possibly be when another layer is peeled. I love that. And our reactions to incidents in life often bring out sides of ourselves that that we didn't know existed. Um, I said that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, did. I believe that. I'm teasing. Wow. I just, <laughs> and, um, and, and, and it went on. It said, for an actor, I think it can be disturbing at first, especially if their personal politics enter. But characters with the most controversy inspire the most thought. Preaching never gets through to an audience. It's only through a character's growth that the audience grows. And I, profound, I mean, it's so true. Um, and as characters stay with a show for 30 years, we of course peel layers of who they are and we learn more and more about their soul. That's right, as they do, as they do. Uh, yeah. Not the actor, as the character learns to yeah. learn. And, and hopefully the act, and the actor. And, and you and I, we learn about ourselves as we go through Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we enjoy entertainment. I mean, that's why we, yeah. So you mentioned, you know, Antonio Sabato Jr., Vanessa Marcel, Amber Tamblin, Jonathan Jackson, Steve Burton, Ricky Martin. What was the most important uh, thing to you when adding new characters? In adding new characters? Yeah. Would you say? Um, well, uh, First of all, whenever we would add new characters, I'd work in concert with whomever the writer was at the time to have an idea of who that character is. Um, I mean, with Ricky, we didn't have that character written, so that was a character written for Ricky. But um, um, who's the character to begin with and, and then bring the actor in? And... You know, that decision is subjective. You know, if you look mm. at all of the shows, I, I used to say I could look at some primetime shows and know who the, 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 the um, uh, writer, executive producer was, because in primetime it's writer, executive producer, because all their shows, and I say that, I mean, lucky them, they got the shows on, they all looked alike. And w if you meet the writer, they all look like the writer and his wife. So, or the wife and the husband, you know, they, they, people tend to cast in their own image and, um, and everybody has a different way of doing it. It's a very subjective, it was important for me not to do that, but there were no brunettes on the show either. So hello, Vanessa, but um, <laughs> I don't think there were brunettes, not, not young. And, um, but, you know, I talked to the, the writers and, and then talked to Mark Teschner. Mark and I worked hand in hand and, you know, he does, he does all the scouting and brings all the talent in. And, um, he was an, he is an amazingly talented man and was a great partner. We just, we love each other. That helped. We trust each other. We love each other. We trust each other and we respect each other. And we don't always agree. We don't always agree, but we can discuss it when someone would come in the room, go out of the room, we'd have that conversation. And um, and if we needed more material, we'd get more material, but it was a very, uh, it's a very su subjective call. That, cause, you're, Cause you're painting a palette. That's how I see it, that any, mm -hmm. any movie, any, any show is a palette of characters and people that we relate to. They can't all be the same and look the same. Right. That was part of the problem I had with some of daytime was it, there were so many blondes that I couldn't tell the difference with character. And Who so you were watching. It, was, yeah. it was important to talk to hair, makeup and wardrobe. Bob Miller, 
I, you know, define the characters, which they love. Wardrobe designers love that. Define your characters with their wardrobe. And everybody should not be wearing Kelly Green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one I of mean, the reasons incredible. Vanessa, we did black and white. So let's just keep her simple. Ooh. Interesting. Vanessa. I love black and white. Um, I mean, and your relationship with Mark had to have been incredible when you look at that list. And then on top of on top of that list comes Maurice, Sarah Brown, Nancy Lee Gron. I mean, yep. Maurice, Sarah, Nancy, Steve, you know, from from your from you and Mark bringing them on, we're, we're basically still on to today. Absolutely. Nancy Lee was, I think, both Mark and probably Michelle Valjean, who had worked with her on Santa Barbara. So, you know, there's a whole Santa Bar. And, and I think Bob Guza was on at the time. So probably Guza, Michelle, um, had mentioned her with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wasn't really familiar with all the other actors on other shows. Um, I didn't have time. Sure. Yeah. I didn't yeah. watch and. Once I was in General Hospital, the only thing I could really do was General Hospital. I don't think I saw a movie or a television series for nine years. Maybe one movie, but oh, was, I bet it was twenty-four. It was, it was twenty-four-seven. I yeah. I actually had some <clears throat> almost lost a friend, and and just had to sit down and say, "Listen, you need to understand the following." You know, I have work and I have my family, and that's all I have time for right now. So. You know, I worked in PR on As the World Turns and Getting Light, and I know reading 10 breakdowns a week, I can't imagine an executive producer's role at all. I mean, the amount of hours is astonishing. And and, and the devotion of what, what you're doing for these shows and, and to bring them to life. So I applaud you. Um, it was a lot know, of when you Alan, it was a blessing. It was really, it was, it was a great time. Well, I'm not getting to, you know, because uh, you and I are talking and there's, uh, the fans are all talking, but I know from Oh, I can't see that. Oh. I, I know that they are, you know, they love your time at General Hospital immensely. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Thinking of that list of actors, besides Ricky, because he, he was internationally known, but is there one of them or a couple that you thought, oh, I see them, you know, this is a... A stepping stone for them. Well, I I saw early on. When I say I saw early on, I I found out early on through a lot of people who worked in daytime and through my research that daytime is a stepping stone for people. So I knew that going in. My um, yeah, of course it is. You know they. Um, let me turn this off. Um, I don't know that that's, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So uh, that was just, we all, that was a stepping stone for, so we knew we could lose people. You know, you wow. bring them in, you bring them in for a con, you bring them on for a contract, you, you build them up. And then with um, great agenting and managing, they have bigger opportunities and mm -hmm. you can lose them. But there's, Completely. you know, there's a world of uncertainty out there, and the, the 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 there's such a great value in this daytime genre, both for the actors, for the crew, and for the audience. In is that it, it's a constant, and it's it's good work, um, it's good story, it's good relating, it's good emotions, and mm -hmm. so some I, I will, actors like to say. I'm glad I just saw this comment from what? Patrick Mulcahy. I love Patrick. <laughs> Alan, it is true. Wendy might be the most hardworking producer I've ever worked with. I so. love you too, Patrick. Patrick <laughs> is, he he uh, suffers no fools. And I appreciate yeah. that. He's a brilliant writer, first of all. He certainly is. Begin with that. And to have the opportunity to know him and love him and and have his respect but and have his honesty if you know i just really really appreciate that well you had a great relationship with uh claire labine as your head writer can you talk yes, about your partnership yeah it was great we'd um i'd get up uh 5 30 every morning which was 8 30 her time and 
grab some coffee by six, whatever. And <laughs> we'd talk for a couple of hours or an hour. Actually, yeah, a couple of hours because I had the time. because I'd go in around nine. Um, and um, we just talked about characters and story all the time and life and life you know we had the, the one of the biggest discussions was uh if you you know is is everybody capable of murder you know we would have those kinds of discussions you know well if your so-and-so is raped or if they killed you this right. would you is everybody capable we would we would go at it with each other which was great that. because that, that would relate yeah. to character you know because mm -hmm. if an incident comes into a character you have to look at well how would they react look at how we've all reacted to covid and stuff you know we uh, it takes incident to mm -hmm. see another layer in a character so and and, and 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 how differently everybody reacted to covid yeah. you know like we all so ha having those conversations is brilliant because everybody reacts differently yeah she um i wanted to hear I had not seen her show, so I had to look at Ryan's Hope. Not had to, I wanted to. I looked at a little Ryan's Hope. And um, and so there was, both of us had an adjustment to get together, but story-wise, character-wise, uh, uh, we were very, very much in sync. And I said to her in the beginning, I wanted to do something about AIDS. I mean, it was um, horrible at that time. Mm -hmm. It still is, but it was horrendous. And when I first got on General Hospital, I I spoke to ABC about it. And they they really weren't, I think they weren't ready for it. I know they weren't. Um, and I had an idea of one of the quarter mains and the whole story idea with one of the quarter Agent, mains. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, the whole goal, the goal was it's not a gay disease, it's a non-discriminatory disease. Um, mm -hmm. so even smart people can make foolish choices, like Robin and Stone did. And um, and Claire thought a lot about it. And we went on a retreat, an ABC retreat, uh, when Pat Philly was the president, one of the great women in broadcasting. I'm very grateful to be have been under her tutelage. She taught me a lot. And um, coming home, Claire and I drove there together and drove back together to her place in Brooklyn. This was in Connecticut. And she said, uh, I have an idea of how to do it. And so we talked about it and, um, and there we were. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it was great. I mean, you know, we talked about bringing in stone and that, who that character would be and using Rob and having it be Robin and, and having it be a young love story. And, you know, the golden child of Robin and what would happen to the entire community when this happens to our dear Robin. And we mm. wanted her to live. So we, we made certain decisions at that time, which even if you make those decisions, you can change along the way because you have time to do that. So I, I, I'm really glad Claire, I mean, Claire just latched on to that in all of the stories. I mean, Claire um, came in one day and said, uh, I want to do a heart story. You know, I would, she had some personal story of, um, somebody's heart being put into somebody dying and being put into somebody else. And, and I said, well, wait, you know, Shelly, and I think Shelly walked in and I said, Shelly, come on and join us for a minute. Cause she, and Shelly's husband was a um, cardiologist. He's now a car, a, a, a cardi, uh, he's a medical entrepreneur was part of the stint team and angioplasty. Mm. I mean, he's brilliant. And she said, Frank told me a story one day. This is how a little bits of how this story came about. It was in a at the table in my office. Frank told me a story one day where somebody gave a heart to somebody else and the person leaned down and listened to the living heart in another person of their loved one. And Claire and I were sobbing and like, <laughs> that's in. And then I brought up, I said, well, okay, I have a heretical thought. And um, I know we're not supposed to kill children. And God knows I don't want to. But BJ needs some help. I mean, um, 
uh, Maxi is BJ Maxi. He's 30 years help me. And <laughs> if this happens, you have, I remember seeing the scene of a brother giving the heart, this makes me cry, giving the mm. heart to his brother of his child. Mm. Um, so I couldn't even imagine. It was born there and we went from there. Wow. I wanted to read a post. Candace says, I don't really have a question, but could you please say thank you for being so bold and brave for allowing and not being afraid to go tell the Robin and Stone storyline? Thank you so much. Uh, Mickey Dwyer, Mickey, uh, not Mickey at the time, it was Pat Philly. Pat Philly was 100% behind us. Supported. That's awesome. It, it's a, you know, that, that makes it having the support of your, yeah. you know, network. Yeah. We lost a lot of viewers. They, they were not uh, ready for it. Um, and I, I think I said, I think I said it to Maurice um, the other day. Um, I look back on it and, and uh, there, again, no blame or anything, but I wonder if we hadn't have announced it, because we made some big announcements if, uh, and it had just crept in. Play, yeah. It. Yeah, I think that, I think for the audience that would have helped. We were just mm. so excited and happy and proud and, and it was good. I mean, it was a good thing on so many levels that we did it, but on another level to lose those people was. Not and it's talked, talked about incessantly, you know, as people's, one of people's favorite storylines. It's something I'll never forget. I think the most gratifying is when somebody um, says to me, either on Twitter or something like that, that you saved my brother's life. That storyline saved, you know, really helped me to come out or helped me to deal with it. And it was uh, very, very rewarding. I had a friend at ABC when I was an executive who... I worked very closely with he and he died from AIDS. And I remember mm. him. Call, I remember the day he called me and he said, um, I have AIDS and my parents don't know that I'm gay. This was a grown man. And I said, as only the two of us could joke, I said, well, they're going to find out now, <laughs> you know, yeah. and he laughed. He said, I know, thank God. And um, so it was, it was, it was something that needed really to be looked at to, to um i'm it was uh, and daytime gave gives was giving that op continues to give the opportunity to do real life stories you can get extreme can get you know fun silly and really you know out there but but it really it, with so many great characters gives the opportunity that's why i loved it so much there was so much to say and I do. mean, the impact of, of storytelling. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I can only imagine the response you got to doing time on Maple Drive, you know, because it was so early, you know, uh, when there wasn't a lot of things, you know, with gay characters on television. At all. And this was somebody. Uh, right. Who, and yeah, it, so it was. Um, yeah, I'm sure helped. you got a lot. Dinah was asking, do you have a favorite uh, storyline with Claire? Would it be this one? I I don't have favorites uh, in that way. I appreciate the question. I was thinking to myself today, if Alan says to me, I know you're not going, <laughs> what's your favorite color, Wendy? I'm going to say, because Alan and I, by who everybody is watching, Alan and I have never met. So this is like, this is Alan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Favorite. <laughs> um, and I, I thought to myself, I don't really have a favorite. I love all colors. Um, I loved all the stories that we did with Claire. There wasn't one that I didn't love. I mean, I, you know, and Lois and Ned was something Claire brought in. I mean, Alan's, I, I think this was with Claire. Well, certainly BJ we talked about and AIDS and Alan's drug addiction. I mean, I remember saying to Claire, I think it was Claire at the time. Again, I don't have the time frame. Those of you who do, forgive me. Um, well, the, and they do better than. And both they of us. do, yeah. You know who else yeah, does? Yeah. Is Gregory. Gregory like watched every show, and he's got that mind that remembers everything. I just want to be in that moment. And uh -huh. um, anyway, um, yeah. And, and Monica's breast cancer was Claire and Monica's as well, breast wasn't cancer. it? 
but they were all um the the drug addiction story was I literally had someone that I know dearly who had an addiction and the doctor said can I have some here two for you three for me so oh uh, you know I just thought oh my god and not only is that horrible but what would that be like how do these doctors deal with when things hit themselves and my mother had had breast cancer and stuff like that. So Claire, Claire was really open to, you know, ideas and I was open to hers. And I mean, Ned and Lois, what fun we had on that location in Brooklyn on the Brooklyn mm -hmm. bridge, Shelly Curtis hanging out of a helicopter to get the shot. Um, I mean, held on, but it's great. Great, great fun. So no, I'm sorry. I don't have a favorite. They were all great. I mean, they were Do all. You, um, I mean, they yeah, were and that makes sense. I mean, it's great storytelling. When you look back on those nine years, what are mm -hmm. you most proud of? I'm proud of of um, the the fact that the fans um, cherished those stories for the, their characters. Um, they the feedback, the impact. And the um, the longevity of the memories, um, I'm I'm very grateful for. I mean, I, I also I just loved the family. You know, I loved the family mm -hmm. working together. That that group of people. I still stay in touch with some people, and and um, it was great great team. Great team. Uh, Patrick said that the drug drug addiction was post Claire, but that was post Claire. Uh, thanks. Post Claire. Um, so was that Bob Patrick? Was that with Bob? He'll tell us in a second. Connie Pasolacqua said, How much we miss dear Claire. She and Wendy were magic together. Yeah. How much I miss you, Connie. I'm so glad <laughs> you're back. I know she is back. Um, what did Patrick say? And was the nurse's ball you? He asked. Did you do the, the nurse's yep. ball? Went to Claire. He does one believe day. it was Bob. He does believe it. Yes, I think so too. Yeah. 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 I think, um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, the more I got to know the actors and, and it's like everybody, well, it's not that they told me, but you know, every actor has other talent other than just acting. Maybe they started dancing. Maybe they started singing. Maybe they want to sing. Maybe they sing in the shower and can sing. Maybe they, they like comedy and they've only been, so yeah, we Claire and I talked about let's do let's do something and we love Lucy and let's you know put that out there where it becomes a benefit for the hospital and use the talent. And we had the um good fortune of budget. So we could really put on a show. When yeah. I look back at those, I mean we really, you know, they when I say really put on a show, we had a lot of rehearsal time. Right. They rehearsed, so they would come in on different days and rehearse, and or so they would today rehearse. they today they blink and it's on the air. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, yeah. But that yeah. that it's still going on and that Lucy is still doing her Lucy stuff. I love, I love, I love. Yeah, that. I mean that's got to make you feel proud. And like I said, the characters that you created that are still there, you know. Well, Carly and Sonny and I don't consider it that I created just just to to be but I'm I, I'm not being un, I'm not being ungrateful, but, right, but did I, it... I didn't do anything without the team of writers. And even, no. uh, you know, Bob and I had a lot of good times. We I know everybody knows that he and I sometimes were a little oil and watery and I take responsibility for that because I don't know that I really um, knew um, how to, how to um, speak with him. Um, and I think that's something that um, I've learned and I'm still learning, you know, there, everybody, right. as you said in the beginning is different and you, you, you know, there are, um, in difficult times, there are ways to get through difficult times. I'm not sure I was as graceful getting through difficult times. So it, I have it's to interesting. That. It's interesting because people used to say to me, because I, you know, was in PR for two of the shows, which meant I had 30 actors on each show. 
So that's dealing with 60 personalities. Yes. And you, you had your cast and all of the production team. Right. You had to, you know, you had to be somebody different with every one of those personalities. Yes, but I also, but I also, my responsibility is always uh, creatively to hear what the other person is really thinking. And very often ideas begin so, br they're so brief that it's impossible for another person to know what th that creator is thinking. So it, mm -hmm. it was important for me to learn. And, and I don't think I was as patient with that with Bob. Um, I'm sure Bob wasn't as patient with me either, but, but that's not the point. The point was he had um, a lot of good ideas and a lot of great work. And I'm really, um, I'm glad for our really good times and there's no issues between us today. That's great. Yeah. Julie Pinson is joining me soon for an interview. Um, oh, great. And Port, and Port Charles, I believe, was her first role. Yes. Um, why was Julie the perfect Eve for you or for the show? Well, again, it's, you know, you feel something in that room. And when somebody comes in, you just feel that that's the character. And it's, it's partly the performance but so much of it is the essence of who that person is that they bring to the material that they're reading to the audition. They bring something of themselves. And so, you know, she had a, uh, a confidence and, and a, a stature that was, uh, that really intrigued me that said to me, that's Eve. We can do a lot of good and bad things with that girl. Same with Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa. Vanessa walked into the room. I tease with her about this because Vanessa and I keep keep in touch as uh, as do Rena and I a lot. I actually oh, wrote awesome. a script with Rena um, years ago. Oh, that's ago. fun. Loved it about her life. It was a wonderful time. Um, but Vanessa, oh my God, Vanessa walked into audition and I'll never forget. <laughs> looked at Mark Teshner. She walked in. This little peanut of a gorgeous woman, small. And she sits on the table, crosses her leg and goes, okay, what do you want me to do? You know, something like that. And I was like, whoa. And she read beautifully and she, she brought a lot, a lot to that character that the writers loved. I mean, they just loved her and loved what she brought. So it's something, it's something that the actor, you know, something special that they bring. Mm. I love that. That's they so all great. do. You know, they all. Yeah, happen. every absolutely. Early, um, I think while you were with our tech technical problems, I had read some of the fans were talking how much they loved the Bay. Um, I've done two shows here for the Bay uh, last year with Gregory. How did you get involved with him and and producing and writing that? Um, he when he first uh, before he got it. When he was first thinking about it, honey, you're in camera. Sorry, I'm on now. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> Hi, Alan. <laughs> what do you need? I'm going to get something. You don't want me in here? I'll no, I don't want you. Can I go and make a sandwich? If I'm yes, back. if it's quiet. <laughs> 55 years. No, you can't be in here. <laughs> um, I met with Gregory and Christos, and... Um, at first, Gregory called me, and it, he he is a hu huge source of knowledge in in the daytime world. I Gregory, mean, he has watched right? yeah. all the shows. He rem he's got a, uh, a slick mind, and um, just files everything away. He's got all of this information, and he he was very complimentary. He wanted to work with me. He loved General Hospital. Um, he had this idea for this show, The Bay when he was young and um, thought of the characters when he was young. He can tell you this when you interview him. Mm -hmm. And he had this vision of being up on stage with me someday. Um, wow. he, cre he created his reality and he came to me at a time when I, I was flattered, but I couldn't do it. I said to him, 
I'm flattered, but it's everything that we do in this business takes the same amount of time. You may have fewer days to shoot something, but it's the same focus to get it to that point. And that's the same amount of time and the same amount of focus. And I can't give that now um, because I'm working with my husband and my son and that's where the time is going. So I love what you're doing. I'm flattered. He then called me. He was on, he had created it, was on, had created the, had gotten it, um, uh, in the awards, a, a, a division yes. for, for digital had won many sent it to me to please reconsider. And, um, and so I did. And, yeah, and, love that. He, you know, and I came on board, I said, I'll just come on, just, you know, to consult, because, as my husband can say, I do love giving an opinion. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and then um, EP, and then he, and we worked very closely in story. And writing with him has been an amazing growth spurt for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. He knows what he's he he knows what he wants, but he too will come up with something, and it may not. You have to, I'm not inside his head, so we have to take the steps to get there. And but I know what he wants, so we take the steps and we get there, or we look at each other and go, well, that let's try it this way. But he's a very generous uh, person on every level. And in writing, he is extremely generous and very it's a talented clear, cast. And very clear on what he wants. He's extreme. He's very, very talented. He also is one of those directors, uh, director writers. He, he just knows how it's cutting, you know, mm. which is a great way for a director. I, I've enjoyed everything I've seen. I, I've watched, I think, all of season six. Fans were asking, will there be season seven? Yes, it's in post-production right now. And um, I believe... And I have to get, I, I know one through six, I believe is going to be on Peacock soon. Oh, great. And, um, and then seven will come after that. And, but seven is in the can and oh, really that is good. incredible. So, so smart of all of you to get it on Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, that's in post-production as is the spinoff, which is YA, which is terrific. Terrific. And when, when will YA be out? Don't know. Got to. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. And, and, and when, before I let you go, what's it been like working with your husband and your son? It's been. Some good husband shit. <laughs> 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 that it's been was challenging. You know, you know what? It is when we all come to it, it's been great. We do have to say to each other sometimes, okay. Do not bring Thanksgiving dinner into this meeting. You know, just keep the family bullshit out of it. But um, it's great. They're hugely talented. I like working for people who are smarter than me. I like working with people that are smarter than me. And they're both smarter than me in many ways. And so for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a joy. I've never admitted it and I won't again. <laughs> you won't ever hear this. You'll tape never hear that again. <laughs> this tape will explode in 60 seconds. <laughs> Wendy, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you so you. much for doing this. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you to all the people who are watching and listening and who have over the years. I really, really appreciate you a lot. Tell them I'm the one to show. And they, they love you. You know, they, they, they really say it was some of the best years of the So. Thank you. Stay well. Get, have a great weekend. Get, get Gregory on. He's great. Think about I, Gregory. I will, you know, Gregory and I haven't done a one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. We should. I will reach out to him. He's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do it All before right. season day. seven comes. Hey, take, take care in the blizzard. You guys are having a blizzard. I, I'm about to. Yeah, we're about to get hit. Uh, I'm taking my husband out for a, like an early bird special dinner for his birthday before the blizzard hits us. <laughs> All right. Take care. Be safe. It's coming. Be safe, you everybody. Too. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, Wendy Rich, for stopping by. 
Join us next Wednesday when we celebrate the birthday of the one and only Kim Zimmer and help raise money for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. Have a great weekend, as, as Wendy just said. Stay safe, everybody.